so into a huge rabbit hole looking into it this concerns some big players like i said george janko logan paul mike Milak, and bobby lee now the weird thing is oh. bobby lee i actually have talked about this guy before on my channel oh. but that was years and years ago do you remember that review i did of ksi's uh, comedy film comedy film with the biggest quotation marks imaginable bobby lee was actually in that film and now it's going to come full circle that i'm talking about him on the slop channel now if you know logan paul has a podcast called impulsive logan paul floyd mayweather <laughs> floyd's a big fucking ass <laughs> It's kind of like the podcast I do, to be honest. And so they've started to smell their own farts. I'm not touching the low-hanging fruit there. No, oh, <laughs> fucking piece of shit. Fuck you. I could hear him silently smirk as soon as you said that. That didn't even cross my mind. Holy shit. But it's not a bunch of old people speaking over each other. It's a bunch of billionaires speaking over each other. Now, Logan hosts Impulsive with Mike Milak. Now, I would consider that Mike and Logan have a better relationship than Logan with his brother, Jake. I mean, to be fair, honestly, at this point, Logan Paul probably defends Prime more than he does his brother brother jake now mike is someone who is known for writing a book that he really wanted you to buy you better buy that book i just want to sell out this book the fifth final available right now on it. and also dating lana rhodes who does a bit of the uh the, 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 the adult film stuff but impulsive a while ago used to have a third host a permanent host and that was george janko now george has got a lot of hate he's always been seen as this like logan paul clinger on because you know he's mostly known nowadays for being a host of the impulsive podcast until he left but originally back in the day he was actually pretty big on vine he had around 500,000 followers which if you do the inflation reference to like you know vine followers to tiktok followers that's about 7 billion followers and of course because he came from vine which all these people did he did a lot of collabs back on vine with logan were they funny were they hilarious what do you think bro is vine yo you like this shirt on me yeah it looks good no i'm not feeling it and when the vine exodus originally happened and everyone left he went onto youtube with logan and he got a pretty big following and then in around 2020 he started appearing pretty regularly on logan paul's podcast show impulsive now one thing you probably notice is why does every single youtuber on the entire planet end up becoming a podcaster because they realize and trust me i've known this from personal experience you put in about one tenth of the effort you do in a youtube video and you get paid around 100 times more i mean think about it these videos are put out on the main channel the next one's gonna be like 16 hours long i'll probably get a sponsor for it that like barely breaks even or i could just sit there on a podcast playing fortnite not really paying attention and probably make 10 times the amount of money that the darkwood video would ever make and this is where we introduce the biggest player in the story Bobby Lee. Now, Bobby Lee is a stand-up comedian and an actor. Like I said, he's been in great works like uh, KSI and Casper Lee, Laid in America, an amazing film, truly one of the greats. Now, Bobby Lee is someone who I never really invested time into, I never looked into, but I've seen him everywhere you know when you're like doom scrolling tiktok at three in the morning and you see people that basically just stole a clip from someone else and they put like gta gameplay at the bottom of like someone going down a hill a lot of those clips <laughs> might actually be a podcast and on that podcast you might have bobby lee you know just talking about some bizarre life story i think one of his most viral stories and you probably have seen it is him talking about this this weird situation where someone touched him that had down syndrome when i was nine i got molested by a guy with down syndrome don't laugh, Brandon. That really does bring a whole new level to the TikTok comment section saying, I'm going to touch you. Now, he's known for a lot of things. You know, his work with Mad TV, Pineapple Express, uh, The Dictator as well with Sasha Baron Cohen. And he's even going to appear in the upcoming Borderlands film, which kind of makes sense because he does actually have this channel called Bobby Lee. And he was a gamer. He uploaded like two gaming videos 10 years ago. So I'm going to call him a gamer. People don't realize this, but this is the exact amount of people that go to a Creed concert. 450. <laughs> One thing I do want to say as well that's completely wild, looking at these videos of Bobby Lee like 10 years ago and looking at him now, he looks the exact same. Believe me, I'm a 27-year-old man. That wall is coming for me any day now. I'm going to wake up one morning, get out of my bed, look in the mirror. I'm just going to look like Gollum. He's known most nowadays right, for his podcast, Tiger Belly, and his other very popular podcast, which he hosts with Andrew Santino. That one being called Bad Friends. Now, whenever I've seen clips of Bobby, I've always thought, oh, it's it's the guy that told the, the, the Down Syndrome story, Lamau. But every time I go into the comment Lamau. sections, I always see that people are calling him out saying that he's a creep he tells really bizarre stories and also sexually harassing multiple people now i'm going to put that in the filing cabinet for a minute because we will definitely get back to that that is the main focus of the video but to give context i want to talk about the situation with uh lover boy logan and lover boy george now george isn't on the podcast anymore big shock huh? mostly because george felt and to be fair you could kind of tell in clips he was becoming the punching bag more and more in the episodes he's being talked over no one really cared about him but he was screwing it all up yeah, I was actually in pain. Thanks for remembering that episode. But you just 
shitted on me. Now the whole comment. Well, no, I'm trying you to do fuck up everything. And things between Logan and George started to get really, really awkward. Now, one thing I've noticed <laughs> watching a lot of podcasts, it seems that a two host format seems to work the best. If you add three, it gets a little bit confusing. If you add four, it becomes very confusing. Any more than that, it is basically just inoperable. It's like an Xbox 360 Modern Warfare lobby with everyone screaming slurs at each other. Oh, I I mean, from personal experience, the podcast oh, I, I do with Dolan, Nerd. <sighs> Something about that. Just... And what, 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 Modern Warfare Lobby uh, with everyone screaming. Let's, let's just enjoy this. Let's go back to 2007. Slows at each other. I mean, from personal experience, the podcast mm, I do with Dolan, uh, Nerd, and Colossal, like, one. there's four of us, and we have the added difficulty of us not being in the same room, having lag, because one of us is in Mexico, one of us is in America, one of us is in Australia, one of us is in the UK, and unfortunately, because Discord has a bit of input delay, we end up speaking over each other, like, like, it can be hell, but still, we make it work. I know podcasters use a lot of cheat codes, like Joe Rogan, for example, whenever he has a host on he purposely messes with the host's headphones so they can actually hear their own voice when they talk and they do that on purpose because when someone else speaks they can also hear that to the point that your brain <laughs> gets so like like frazzled you can't continue the conversation yeah, the so up. talking over someone is basically impossible you know george had it really hard and you could say hey maybe he's overreacting but i've seen various clips on the podcast where you know people are just facing away from george almost like he he's like a random viewer that broke in and everyone's kind of like too awkward to ask him to leave so he just sits there even though he was an actual host and logan definitely promoted like the bullying of george because it was content i mean even people like you know shaquille o'neal jumping in on george but when the poor guy is just trying to you know add something to the dialogue hold on yeah. you ain't gonna ask me a question <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> he, waits to, he likes to wait until he's got the bro you question. tapped me in play mode and i broke my hand what happens if i <laughs> ask the wrong question and you punch me listen man i, I read the bible line when they talk about david and goliath i've never seen a giant and so like i've li i'm literally just I'm a little taken. You've been sitting over here for 30 minutes and that's all you can freaking say? <laughs> <laughs> and George didn't like this because, you know, he was someone that wanted to grow and everyone was putting him down. I'm not saying he's a saint. I mean, believe me, if you're involved in Logan Paul's inner circle, you've probably got some skeletons in your closet. But all of this escalated in episode 351. This was the episode with Bobby Lee. Mike even said on the Tiger Belly podcast recently that that episode was actually so bad, it Ooh. ruined a lot of people's lives. Now, the Bobby Lee episode, you probably haven't even heard of it because they've done their best to try to bury it because it is genuinely <laughs> one of the worst podcast episodes of all time many podcast hosts biggest fear God is you know not having enough to talk about desert storm over here about but here they talk about too much they, they, they go into way too much detail and obviously like i said before with george the dynamic in this episode was even worse because you know bobby was basically just sat facing away from george the entirety of the time this then leads to george thinking uh oh i'm in an episode <laughs> as a host and i am saying nothing here like no one cares about what i'm saying boys i got it i'm gonna do a monologue and when i do the monologue people are gonna put it on tiktok with the gta car gameplay going down the ramp at the bottom and it's gonna get lots of views so it basically talks about trying Trying to find himself and this is also mixed in with a bunch of what? comedic bits in between and then bobby who is a guest by the way not a host immediately jumps on george's back roasting him basically saying that he's an absolute vibe killer honestly if i was not christian i'd probably be suicidal it was just a long monologue he was just waiting he was and I was, and let me just say something i loved what you were saying it was just very long <laughs> yeah we just need writers to edit that down <laughs> usually monologue. when i do my comedy i don't have writers in the room okay i can tell I but like um <laughs> <laughs> now some people did have sympathy for george a lot of people didn't they basically said i mean bro you're, you're sat next to a comedian uh, a funny man uh and you're asking the funny man to uh not be funny um that's kind of cringe but other people tried to add basically saying george doesn't really get to speak a lot on the episode He's, he really is just being used as a punching bag because we know for a fact if logan Ooh. ended up being the punching bag on his own podcast he would not have that he would just he would walk out he would quit his it. podcast and then this all accumulates to the infamous part where george basically rage quits the lobby he leaves disconnects and doesn't come back for the rest of the episode he, he is clocked out yeah, oh, yeah I, know, I know george has been under a tremendous me, amount of abuse. no no george, 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 no no stop george, george i want you over here with me george i want you over here with me. chase him down go you find him george no go get him 
go get him and then bobby adds fuel to the fire just calling him a bitch boy saying like that, that that's so unprofessional that's so cringe now although i have talked about this many times how you know this, this <laughs> new wave of influencers online they are masters at clip baiting they will purposely overreact because they know that someone's going to clip it and hopefully make them famous that's the reason why you see so many streamers reacting to content and they just completely overreact and, and scream and shout to like the most mid clips imaginable because they think okay this is kind of mid but also monetizable because then people clip it and i get famous and i get money and i like money and although that being said i'm doing like the i'm doing like the star trek thing what the hell and although that being said i do genuinely think that george you know rage quitting oh f4ing to the desktop <laughs> that was real that that wasn't staged he was genuinely tilted and that was like months and months uh, of just rage building up within him now although we should wrap it up there and be like oh it's, it's a little bit of light trolling that's it bobby was doing some really weird things <laughs> to george that a lot of people seem to you know just completely gloss over he was asking george at one point to like smell his uh his, his junk his his below his down here regions smelling that and he even keeps trying to grab mike's penis like like throughout the episode he even tried to pull out his own schlong in the episode and get mike to touch it no no smell you gotta smell it so you're gonna fucking smell my dick okay. and it's not gay so here yeah. i have to grab your head no <laughs> i don't know man like Even when I was in high school, this shit wasn't funny. You know what I mean? Like, like Bobby's the type of guy, like I know he's small and stuff, but like, he just needs to be like smacked one time. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's something he's gone. He's like slipped under the radar of somebody just like popping him one good time. And I think all you gotta do is just fucking slap the shit out of him one good time catch him where it catches a bit of his ear too you know what i'm saying just fucking a bop and uh, i think he'd be good i really think he'd understand boundaries and shit more um because like i mean you're literally with your pants around your fucking ankles right in front of another grown man who's obviously uncomfortable and you're grabbing his head and forcing it I mean, I don't know if his dick was exposed or not, but we're pretty close. Uh, I don't, I don't know, man. Like that just for me, like if I was that George guy, like that left hand, just a nice straight jab, right in a, right in a cock that I think really would have helped things kind of line back up. And apparently as well, during the podcast, there was worse stuff that Bobby did, but the producers cut it out. And in turn, it's made George look like he was just completely overreacting, even though there is a lot of context missing. Who was the first person that jumped off the couch and said, George just left. That was not good. We have to fix this situation. And, and, but did, and did, they not, tried to... did they not cut shit that you should have stood up for me and said, hey, you can't cut that shit. That's we... going to make him look like an idiot for leaving. Okay, let's, let's slow down. Numerous times on the show, caught things that we believe will protect the integrity your reputation of the guest that protected nobody but him you know there's no videos online of bobby giving logan you know the, the the sucky special i would love the scenario where i grab one hand like this one hand like this bring it towards me stirring it like a pot like a cauldron a beautiful elixir and then suddenly that is what i would love to do today you know you know th th there's nothing like that the only confirmation we really have is george himself saying there was more stuff there but to protect bobby it was cut out now after that episode things got a lot more rocky between george and logan even at one point having this dialogue talking about religion christianity because george himself is very religious and during this dialogue which basically boiled down into i will let speak over you now very loudly logan did eventually retract his comments i made some pretty uh pretty out of line comments cry. the following Three weeks have been the hardest period of my fucking life. And the funny thing is, guess what episode Logan retracted his comments on? The Crypto Zoo episode. The one thing that has still been following Logan Paul to this day that he refuses to address. Now, eventually, early last year, George, you know, just fully <laughs> left the podcast. He left his podcast and he started a new one called The George Janko Show. Is that the most mid name for a podcast imaginable? Yeah, pretty much. But to be fair, Impulsive was, you know, Logan Paul in Impulsive, the Japanese forest. You get 
get it. You get it. He's impulsive. Lamau. Same reason that we call the podcast, to be honest. If you know, you know. Now, what a lot of people do when they get their own platform, they use said platform to cry. They don't directly cry. They throw a lot of shade, which is what show Mike Milak. And here he claims that loads of stuff was edited out to make him look worse. You know, part of the podcast with Bobby Lee was. Did they not cut shit that you should have stood up for me and said, hey, you can't cut that shit. That's we... going to make him look like an idiot for leaving. Even the episode where Mike appeared on Tiger Belly, which is Bobby Lee's podcast. Part of that was cut out as well. You saw me. I went on Bobby's show. Yeah. Right. And they cut around it. You said that. Well, he... I, didn't, when, I have no control over that. And Logan even apparently reaching out and saying, hey, you know that energy drink that's really popular Celsius? Don't take a sponsor with them because I own an energy drink company and it's called Prime. Not only was I controlled and pushed around on Impulsive, but then Logan's making calls and directing my show. That's not okay. What was that about? He told me that I couldn't take Celsius. He also goes on to say he would never grow as a person in that environment. Apparently Impulsive was just losing money overall and he just wasn't being paid. And Logan came to me for my religion to show hit rock bottom and we weren't getting paid. But it's not all bad. He says he was very grateful for his time on Impulsive and he doesn't even hate Bobby Lee. He just thinks that that episode just had a really shit outcome. Now, I'm sure you all know what happened next. Logan Paul booted up TikTok and Jesus Christ, I don't know who he's sucking off on TikTok. I don't even follow the guy. But every fifth scroll I see whenever I open TikTok, it'll always be Logan Paul. He'll be here in, in the corner of the screen and it'll be a green screen showing some like court document or something he's reacting to. I'm actually just sick of seeing it at this point. I'm hopefully making this video so it gets out of my For You page. Now, when you look into this response, you do kind of start to realize that Logan is beating around the bush with a lot of topics. In particular, how Bobby Lee was basically, you know, just straight up sexually harassing these guys on his podcast. So what he does in typical Logan Paul PR fashion is he changes the argument. It's not about that anymore because that that's bad so sex stuff. That could be lawsuit. I'm already dealing with crypto zoo. Instead, let's talk about George being paid. Let, let's bring up an argument. I know I can definitely win. So then everyone gets distracted by that and then thinks I'm the good guy, at least for, you know, the, the next month or so. So what he does is shows texts from George and it's really cherry picking to kind of build this narrative that, you know, he's basically in the right and George is just a flat out liar. And then in the last 20 seconds of the video, he barely apologizes to George. I should not have mocked his beliefs. I apologize for that. I should have stuck up for him with Bobby Lee and I definitely should have had his back more like a friend. If anything, Logan actually apologized more in that religious debate they had during the Crypto Zoo episode more than what he did in this TikTok. You know, maybe someday that they'll resolve their dispute, that they'll hug and they'll kiss or they might just do what KSI and Logan did. Hate each other until they realize they can make more money by being mates. But what I do want to make the focus on now is Bobby Lee and his, uh, his quite uh, bad behavior. The stuff I've seen this guy do is basically only found in the depths of VR chat and nowhere else. Now, obviously, a lot of what George said, it's just his word against Logan's and Bobby's and pretty much everyone else's. There's no proof. But there are multiple compilations on YouTube of Bobby, you know, hugging, kissing, and like yeah, touching various, thing. you know, news anchors, hosts. I say this a lot as a bit, right? Because, you know, like, like in the TikTok comment section, someone's having an argument. I mean, they're talking about it, like and they basically just say, I'm going to touch shit, you. Like, and there is nothing you can do about it. You're getting touched tonight. You know, it's just a bit to say, like, I'm going to touch you. Like, like there's, it's not that deep. But he was actually touching people. And the funny thing is about Bobby, when he realized that he went too far with this stuff, he'd be like, oh, I, I, I lived in Europe for a bit. That's that's how people were, Lamau. You know, when he realizes he's pushed the boat out too far, he then tries to basically say, oh, it was all a bit. It was it was all a bit, guys. But obviously, you can only say it's a bit so many times until people kind of realize, okay, bro, you, you, you're a little bit weird. There's even this one interview that is just really awkward. And you can tell that there's a news anchor that's like really uncomfortable with Bobby. I think he's gonna bring up the ankles and shit, and that, that was rough, man. Like, there've been stuff, uh, especially like in Bobby's recent career that, you know, pretty funny stuff, you know, I'll give him credit, but like, Jesus. The whole time Bobby I had actually tries to, you know, move away up. from him, mostly because he wanted to uh, kiss her ankle bones. Yeah, that was a rough what? one. Yeah, you don't feel good. You want me to do it again? <laughs> what am I? What, what? 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 Where are you going? And then he basically get up out of his seat and coax her to sit back down. And then basically just this weird ultimatum that like, you know, if you don't come back, if you don't sit down in this chair right now, I am never coming onto this show again. You're being so rude right now. <laughs> sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I apologize. My bad. I'm sorry. If you get up again, I swear to God, I'm never going to come back here. I mean, I'll be honest. It's a pretty pathetic threat, a pretty pathetic ultimatum. If anything, it kind of reminds me of the people in the COD lobbies that say, you know, if you steal my kill, I'm 
I'm leaving the clan. And even though she's really uncomfortable, she still, you know, through the power of persuasion through Bobby Lee, she sits back down on the couch. And then at one point, she even like covers with her coat to stop Bobby from touching her. It's just, it's so awkward. There's even a story involving Theo Vaughn. If you don't know Theo Vaughn, he's one of those podcast hosts that even though he's like in his 50s, he is the master of clip baiting. Basically, you start a podcast, just pretend that you're like, you know, just borderline 10 IQ, one intelligence stat in Fallout New Vegas. You know, the one where, where the guy tells you like when you pick it, he's like, oh my God, you're actually a fucking moron. I fixed up your head as best I knew how. I guess I missed a spot. <laughs> He is the god of clip baiting. Now, I had no idea who Theo Von was. I'll be honest, for the longest time, I actually thought he was Miley Cyrus's dad. So that just shows how out of touch I am. But he told a story to Theo Von called the... I just know Theo Von because of... um, Was it Road Rules Extreme Challenge or whatever the fuck on MTV? Real world road... road real world versus road rules challenge or some dumb shit like that and he was on like road rules or whatever the fuck it was called and he was on a bunch of seasons of that he was much more of a dickhead piece of shit back then i, I remember like i remember very much not liking theo Vaughn back then but i was in like elementary school and he was probably mid-20s i'd say Tijuana story. And then in this story, he talks about how he took advantage of a child prostitute to have sex oh, with. There was a Jesus girl that she seemed scared. Yeah. That's the oh. one I wanted. Oh. Oh, the fuck? <laughs> And then in his own words, the child cries the entire time. So Bobby has to speed it up to get it over with. And I look at her face and she's crying. So I do what any good guy would do. I start power fucking her. Uh, so because uh, I want to get geez. it over with. And then when he got backlash for saying that, because wow really you'd get backlash for saying that really what a world we live in now apparently the law behind this joke came all the way back in 2013 <laughs> now apparently the law behind this joke came all the way back in 2013 where apparently he mixed two bad jokes together and it ended up metamorphosizing into that joke and you're probably wondering at. what two jokes did he Maybe mix the in the lab to create that abomination well the first one was apparently having sex with a 12 year old girl that looked like natalie portman specifically the movie leon the professional which unfortunately is a very good film i only watched it because i think it was in like the top 50 imdb films of all time and now i can't even watch that film anymore because of what bobby lee said if anyone's wondering why my, my personal favorite part in the leon film is where gary oldman takes drugs It is a, a 10 out of 10 scene. And the other joke, which is a lot less incriminating, but still disgusting, was having sex with his girlfriend and he wanted to speed it up because apparently she started crying about her dead nan. I'm, I'm sorry, Americans watching. We, we say nan over here. Like we say mum uh, with the letter U in it instead of the letter O. Idiots. Also, even more earth shattering news dropped. Remember when I introduced Bobby by talking about the Down syndrome joke? Apparently, that was just uh, another joke he made up completely for attention. Shocking that comedians can actually lie about their material. Surely someone, <laughs> surely someone will stop them. Again, like, I'm not calling out Bobby for like making up jokes, but, but, because again, I think the worst thing in comedy is people stealing other jokes. But I don't think anyone is stealing Bobby's material. It's yeah, I mean, that's not really a joke I would think would be worth making up. I truly believe that. If Bobby stopped this whole bit, like after impulsive, the, the, the grabbing and the smelling of the junk and stuff i wouldn't care i wouldn't be making this video but bobby even though the producers covered for him bobby. and deleted a lot of the footage he still didn't learn his lesson remember that bad friends podcast i talked about earlier that he's a host on he actually had a guest on there uh, bobby alpha now, i've talked about her whatever. before i've talked about how everyone seems to think that she's an industry plant because she blew up basically out of nowhere she started off on tiktok making a bunch of haha i'm pregnant and that is uh le relatable that is relatable on tiktok i mean it's not relatable in the gaming space one of the biggest games that ever flopped that came out was amnesia rebirth because you played as a pregnant woman on tiktok where there's women and wine moms i'm sure it's relatable anywhere else not really so a lot of people started to think why are you now doing podcasts with drake bobby and when people started to question it the podcast was quickly removed leading people to even believe at some points that basically like they made the podcast so drake could pipe her and that 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 was it like, like then the podcast was deleted drake's lawyers if you want to contact me and send me a cease and desist uh, you want to take me to court my entire claim is a thread i found on twitter from a guy with seven follows but bobby alfoff was a guest on the podcast with bobby lee and it was it was just so awkward i would love to see your feet thank you Germany crickets. Germany crickets. I fucked up. Why would you say that out loud? I was looking at her boots right now. I go I like the boots, but I'm like, what's underneath it? And I go, probably nice feet. How big are your feet? Why? What size shoe do you wear? Yeah, that's not. Why? 
A six? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I do have to preface and say Bobby Althoff's entire gimmick is basically it's her just being, you know, it. deadpan yeah. and unimpressed. There's another comedian in the UK that does the exact same thing, Amelia de Moldenberg. She does a show called Chicken Shop Day, and it's pretty much just sat there being, you know, very awkward. And, uh, Lamau, this, this is cringe. Why aren't you laughing? Can you... Yeah, I hate... I can't, like... The increasingly poor decisions of Tard Margaret is about as far as I'll go with that shit. I never understood why people got so into that. I like fucking awkward ass humor shit. Is that a problem? I can do other things. I can make a, a dragon with my hands, like that. That's, yeah, that's a dragon. Uh, so. Do that. But the point I'm making, Bobby Althoff, she's meant to be unimpressed. She's meant to set up, you know, a, a shield. Like, if you throw anything at her, she's just going to be like, yeah, and... But even she was a little bit phased by the stuff that Bobby Lee was saying to her. You know, Bobby starts saying that, you know, he, he would he would love to see her feet. You know, th th this kind of cringe humor to get under her skin. And then the other host, Andrew humor, Santino, bro. even starts joining in, asking about her shoe size. I mean, I, I get it. You know, each to their own. I'm never allowed to judge kinks again in my life. I, I totally understand that. But even, even then, to make Bobby Althoff feel uncomfortable, comfortable wow you did something really bad there oh. now if they did that bit once like okay fair enough i mean, I mean w whatever like it's not really that bad but they literally did that bit and they beat it into the ground like, like i'm not sure whether i'm talking about like bobby being harassed here or just how unfunny this bit is i'm not sure what's worse and then bobby lee radio, gets down radio, on the ground and basically radio, begs bobby radio, alpha radio, please don't radio, leave radio, please don't radio, leave we need the content radio, I'm radio, texting radio, oh, radio, 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 her manager radio, why like radio, i cut this radio, out radio, yeah. radio, yeah. Radio. No, please. Uh, you, we'll, we'll, no, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, listen, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Begging. Yeah. Bobby, well, Begging. Please don't leave. Please don't tell your manager that, you know, I mean, this is an uncomfortable situation. I really apologize. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Thank you so much for being here, Bobby. And one thing I really do need to point out, Mini because Asian. Bobby Lee looks great for his age. The guy is not in his 30s. He's 52. He is 52 I years he was old. Like and Bobby Althoff is 26. She's a year younger than me. So it's a little bit weird. But again, despite all of this, Bobby Lee is still one of the most successful podcasters. Now, I didn't make this video as like, oh, we, we need to cancel Bobby Lee. We need to deplatform him. We need we need to end his career. It's just pretty obvious that he has like a pattern of behavior of, of just being very, you know, cringe. His entire humor is basically just based around being very sexual with people he has. And I think I'm allowed to say that it is pretty weird to watch, especially because the guy is like so old, he could basically be my dad. Oh God, did I just say that? Oh Jesus. Now to return back to, you know, George and Logan, like Mike Milak said, the situation is very complicated. A lot of these issues really do come down to prioritizing and platforming the wrong people and also money because we all love money because you know you need to ask the question why would impulsive prioritize bobby's image over george oh yeah because bobby is way more famous has way more money way more connections and you'd rather be on bobby's good side than who's this george guy it says he's christian bro oh it's cringe he probably says stop when you swear in public that sucks and i do understand the method to the madness i know that podcast episodes you want that react andy clip you want that clip that everyone starts sharing and all, all the people that you know do these videos be like how i make 20k a month as a tiktok clipper you know it's part of the ecosystem it's, it's all about clipping and content farming because content now is moving to more and more short form content i've said this a million times the biggest streamers that are blown up you know i show speed jinxy queso they didn't blow up from from twitch fuck no they blew up from people clipping their stuff and putting it on tiktok and then people go oh who is this i think overall the worst thing about this situation is the fact that logan kind of you know put the priority of bobby over his friend george because again he saw bobby as a bigger safety net a bigger way to make contacts but unfortunately you know when you're that big and you're in that you know that kind of like streamer culture la scene even though i know he doesn't live in la because taxes were too high he actually moved to a different country which by doing so by the way basically paying no taxes inflating the economy more than one of my commissions i just think your friend should come first and stop and stop asking for women's shoe sizes it's kind of it's kind of cringe